Focus, a weekly program about important issues and events in the two Virginias. Good morning and welcome to this edition of In Focus. This morning we are putting the spotlight on an author. Her name is Lori Sammons and she splits her time between West Virginia and Florida. And she has written a book called One Story, Many Voices a vital resource to help educators identify sexual exploitation. It's an important topic that we will be discussing in depth this morning. And it was written by Sammons with Christy Ivey as the co-author. And Lori has a background in education, dedicating 45 years of her life as a teacher, gymnastics coach, and an adjunct college professor. And for the past 15 years, she has been a consultant for a professional development company. She has administrators and teachers all across the U.S. and even in eight foreign countries that she works with and helps. Lori joins us now in the studio. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting me be here, Melinda. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And you have recently released a book regarding sexual exploitation. So what brought you to even start writing about that topic, Lori? I guess as an advocate of children, Melinda, um, I've always had a certain population of kids that have uh, lit a fire in me, and certainly the ones that are high risk are the ones that have stayed with me. And so uh, through my years of, of education as a um, uh, professor and a teacher, certainly I've been introduced to hundreds and hundreds of kids who have been traumatized. Yes, and this, this is a deep subject, and it might be something that's stigmatized or not really discussed much in our mm -hmm. so society. Lori, why do you think it's important to talk about sexual exploitation and to recognize the signs? Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons why I'm mainly concerned is it's affecting so many people. Mm -hmm. And exactly what you said, it's not a fun topic to talk about because people feel it's dirty. Yeah. you know and awful and there's so much shame that comes with it but I, I think one of the major reasons why it's important to visit about it uh, Melinda is that one in four females mm. and one in 13 males have been wow. affected by sexual assault during their lifetime wow. so and and during the COVID experience mm -hmm. um, it is incredible how the numbers of hitting the the hotlines for help have increased. Yeah, and one in four women and then one in 13 men. Yes. That's staggering. It is. Wow. It is. And Lori, what is your personal why mm -hmm. attached mm -hmm. to this story? I, I love poetry as an English person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so um, enraptured with one of the quotes from Gibran that says, um, let us be so connected with one another mm -hmm. that when one weeps, the other tastes salt. Mm. And I'm impressed so much uh, that there are individuals who have not had the opportunity to speak about this, yeah. that they've entrusted us with their stories so that mm -hmm. others will speak. And I, I think one of the things, Melinda, that I'm really pleased about in uh, doing book tour now uh, mm -hmm. across the country is um, we're, we're hearing people after our presentations say, I thought I was alone. Wow. I, I thought that I was the only one. And mm -hmm. if I wouldn't have worn the red dress or if I wouldn't have gotten too close yeah. to my uncle or wow. if, 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 and it, it's all this blame. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, one of the things that is uh, really powerful in the stories, these are all people who I know and love. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, out of 12 stories, 10 of them had to wait until they were adults before they spoke. Oh. So they've been carrying this grief and these mm -hmm. stories blaming themselves and of course with that comes uh, a lot of repression mm -hmm. and the deeper mm -hmm. that those stories have been kept down mm -hmm. now we see PTSD mm -hmm. we see OCD mm -hmm. we see anxiety depression um, and unfortunately many commit suicide mm -hmm. and so um, I am thrilled for the opportunity now that um, there are individuals who are speaking their story and feeling heard yeah, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, Lori, about a number of stories that um, yeah. you alluded to of personal stories in your book, but can you just give us an overview or summary mm -hmm. of what's inside your book? Sure. Well, I'm going to start with the book cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, one story is uh, the, the life of my pastor's wife, mm -hmm. who from the ages of 5 to 18 was sexually assaulted by her father. Wow. And uh, her story is surrounded by um, people who I have had many contacts with, either former students, colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, one is a lady who I golf with currently in uh, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it was a one-time event uh, mm -hmm. by her father from the age of eight until she was 44. Melinda, she didn't speak. Wow, that long. I, I, absolutely, and, wow. and so again, you see the trauma mm -hmm. that is um, mm -hmm. affected here. And so I, I think um, the other thing I, I find is that trauma is something that grabs the hand of every child or every human mm -hmm. being, and it goes into the room with them, wherever mm -hmm. they are, especially in classrooms. So now, and you know, imagine 25 kids in a classroom and a teacher is dealing with mm. trying to deliver content mm -hmm. and they've got kids who are traumatized and yeah. their mind is not focused on mm -hmm. uh, learning. They're trying mm -hmm. to survive. Mm -hmm. and, and how does someone even heal or overcome that, especially with decades of burying that deep inside you, like mm -hmm. you said, that, that's horrific. There, there's a beautiful book, Melinda, called The Body Keeps the Score. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, the research behind it is so powerful. Mm -hmm. If we don't deal with trauma mm -hmm. uh, and bring it to the surface and talk about it, it will come out mm -hmm. in diseases. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a, um, an assessment survey called the ACE assessment, mm -hmm. uh, and it stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, highly encourage our listeners to mm -hmm. take a look at that. Um, many of our people who are highlighted in the story, uh, out of 10 questions, that from one to 10, 10 being um, high risk for um, long-term diseases, mm -hmm. Our, our characters in the story mm. would be 90 to 100 percent yeses in mm. terms of childhood neglect, mm -hmm. abuse, and household dysfunction. So, um, you know, it, it's I, 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 I've thought many times um, of adverse experiences that have happened mm -hmm. in my own life. And I'm thinking that adversity really gives us an opportunity to be in touch with ourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, listeners who are feeling that they're carrying this story alone, mm -hmm. it's really important that they speak it because uh, it does affect behaviors um, with interpersonal, in mm -hmm. marriages, uh, mm -hmm. wherever they go. Right, and like you said, it causes ailments, even the ability for children to focus in the classroom. It's so many issues. Yes. Can you read us an excerpt from your book that stands sure. out to you, Lori? We'd love there to hear so that. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are so many. There are so many. Just one. So I, I, I think, you know, this is um, the introduction, Melinda. This book is above all else an invitation and a call to action. Mm -hmm. Will you sit with us for a while and listen to the first-hand accounts, both harrowing and hopeful, of sexual exploitation, victimization, and survival and healing. Will you join us in the collective call to equip yourself with education, research, and strategies needed to truly advocate for and contribute to the healing of children? Mm -hmm. There's a quote that says, the eye doesn't see what the mind does not know. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. why we believe that the voices of survivors in this story are um, paired with professional voices of advocacy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess more than anything, we, we hope this book is an urgent appeal for all of us to be first responders. Um, the stories in themselves, how the book is set up is uh, part mm -hmm. one and part two. Part mm -hmm. one carrying the, the authentic stories of survivors. Mm -hmm. And the second part are strategies and evidence-based supports mm -hmm. that are uh, uh, intermixed with the stories to show that um, there are some very positive things that can come out for people who speak, but if they don't tell their story, they, they will carry that to their grave. In fact, Linda, I was over uh, in Lewisburg just recently mm -hmm. doing a, a book talk, mm -hmm. and um, I, there was a, an 80-year-old woman mm -hmm. who was circling my table, and mm -hmm. I could tell she was wanting to get a little bit closer mm -hmm. and ask some questions, and so mm -hmm. the clock was ticking, and I was needing to put things away. And um, finally, as I put my last book in my trunk, um, she said, Mrs. Sammons, I have been uh, followed by a ghost this last hour around, mm. uh, around this bookstore. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know that I, I'm, I'm wanting to read the stories, but I just can't force myself to pick the book up. Mm. And the bottom line, Melinda, was that she had um, a sister who at the age of five mm -hmm. told her, uh, and the sister was 13 years old, she told her that her dad was touching her oh, wow. inappropriately, mm. and the family didn't believe her. Mm. The unfortunate thing is that this girl left the house at the age of 18, mm -hmm. and the family still does not speak 
to this little oh. sister. This lady was 82 years wow. old. She, her 50-year-old daughter was with her. This mm -hmm. was in Lewisburg, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, she just, and this is what struck me as uh, something important for people who are listening. I, I find particularly um, older individuals, mm -hmm. they really have a hard time talking about it, but here's what she said to me. I'm so glad that my sister didn't expose my dad because it would have changed my opinion of my father forever. Hmm. And so again, it's so easy to stuff the stories and not address them. Right. But to have to go to your grave oh. and, and not having contact with a sister. Yeah. Um, you know, and protecting her father rather than protecting the sister. Right. Very, very sad. And very sad, and that changes both of those women's lives for, Abs forever, absolutely. really. Absolutely. Really. Mm -hmm. Well, we have much more to talk about, Lori. We yeah. do have to take a quick break, but uh, this is, again, an important topic that we hope that you're learning a lot this morning, and we have much more to talk about, including some more of what's included in Lori's book and an important website that we want to Great. share with everyone. We'll Great. be right back. Welcome back to this edition of In Focus, everyone. This morning, we've been talking to author Lori Salmon. She spends her time here in West Virginia. Lori, where do you spend your time here in the Mountain State? Glade Springs. Beautiful. And I think it is the most <laughs> beautiful area. In fact, I, my husband gives me grief since I'm from the Midwest. Uh -huh. I've always told him that the mountains look like big stalks of broccoli. Oh, you know? I bet they do, because like depending where you're at in the Midwest, like the plains are flat. There are no mountains yes, in that, sight. That is exactly right. But this is so beautiful. Oh. It is it is truly close to heaven, that's for sure. Oh, yes, it is. Well, it's <laughs> lovely that you spend your time here and then some of your time down in Florida as yes. well. And, yes. Lori, we've been talking about your book, mm -hmm. One Story, Many Voices, and, and it details uh, survivors of sexual exploitation, and you hear from experts in this book. What are the signs that someone has been mm -hmm. exploited? Mm -hmm. I think, again, that's the purpose of us being here, yeah. is that oftentimes we don't know what to look for. Right. And I think all of us, Melinda, have that kind of an intrinsic voice. When we see mm -hmm. something, we need to say something. Right. I'd rather be wrong right. than to uh, not expose. Yes. And so I, I think um, we, we certainly see extreme isolation. We see people pulling away from academic activities in yeah. school, uh, cowering, um, trying to hide, um, mm -hmm. or saying outlandish stories that just doesn't seem to fit, but they don't quite know how to mm -hmm. articulate how mm -hmm. they're feeling. But most importantly, um, there are a lot of self-deprecating things, mm -hmm. cutting, oh, yeah. um, um, you know, just the isolation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the perpetrator's game. That's mm -hmm. the perpetrator's game, is that they try to build trust with a victim. Mm -hmm. And then once they've established that trust, they zoom in and gift and then begin to make promises. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, this vulnerable and accessible child or adult um, will be one who will mm -hmm. have a hard time uh, getting out of the, the cycle. Right, and I can imagine the victim might be fearful that you know maybe they've been threatened by the person who's hurting them and saying, you better yes. not tell anyone. Yes. You know, so that, that's horrible to think mm -hmm. about too. Mm -hmm. um, now, can you also talk a little bit more about um, like the perpetrator and, and mm -hmm. go into that a little bit more with us. Many years ago when I was teaching school we had a government program called Stranger Danger mm -hmm. and our government spent millions of dollars and the message basically bottom line was that um, let's make certain the kids are safe around strangers. Mm -hmm. And if strangers uh, approach you, here's what you need to do. Yeah. The unfortunate thing, Melinda, is that the exact opposite is true in terms of perpetration. 96% hmm. of the perpetrators are people within our circle. Hmm. And so, um, you know, one of the um, individuals who I know very well from my, my home community, mm -hmm. um, this was a daycare center worker. Hmm. And uh, wow. the family had, uh, the father had lost his position. The mother was um, in desperate need of trying to work extra jobs. And mm -hmm. this man just kind of scooped in. And mm -hmm. Uncle Jake became the individual who said, I will take you to church. Mm -hmm. I will, you know, um, pick your kids up and drop the kids off. Mm -hmm. And certainly what happened to their little five-year-old girl mm -hmm. is that she became a victim right in front of the parents 
you know, and there again is that um, the coyness. Mm -hmm. um, they know when trust has been established mm -hmm. and they're so daring that mm -hmm. they are able to manipulate right in front of mm -hmm. Um, loved ones. In fact, um, in one of my chapters, I talk about um, a young lady, Kristen, mm -hmm. whose um, step-grandfather had the audacity during a Thanksgiving with a room mm -hmm. full of 25 family members. Mm -hmm. He is upstairs with Kristen sexually abusing her on the day of Thanksgiving. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, and um, there was enough manipulation that the grandma in that home had to actually report in when she was away from the home. Mm -hmm. I, I need to have a message from you when you're coming close to home. You know, so obviously lots of red flags there. And then this poor young lady began to self mutilate and mm -hmm. um, lose weight and uh, act out. And uh, nobody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And then when she confronted the family, the family had. Uh, uh, the the words were, how would you dare expose our family to this? How, how can you give us this black eye? Well, that seems to be a huge issue, too. Like you mentioned, you alluded to the story earlier about the lady in Lewisburg that you met, and they yes. really, it was like the father versus the sister scenario, but why do you think that, mm. you know, people maybe don't believe the person who's speaking up, mm -hmm. or they just you know, want to keep it a, a, a secret to protect their families, it seems like. I, I think that's the, the big factor involved. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, we've, we've all heard stories from little ones who, you mm -hmm. know, can stretch the truth. Mm -hmm. But in matters such as this, nobody can make this up. Mm -mm. It, it is so sad. Yeah. Um, Jolly, who was a young woman who was in an audience, I was training teachers in, in the state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, she began to hyperventilate. Mm. And um, uh, at break time, she said, said, Mrs. Sammons, I'm so sorry. I apologize for mm -hmm. uh, needing to leave, but I, I just can't handle this. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, what happens is they get mm -hmm. triggered. Victims get triggered mm -hmm. by maybe um, uh, words that they hear. Uh, a former gymnast of mine, she'd say, when I remember my sexual experience, mm -hmm. I, I, can, I know exactly where I was. I can see the red dial on my clock. I can see the, the curtains blowing in the wind. And she was recalling when her best friend's brother sexually abused her. Oh. So I, you know, there's just so many different things. And of course, there are all kinds of threats. Um, one of our victims in, in here um, actually watched uh, one of her animals heads being twisted oh. and the animal died oh. and and so you know things like this oh. you just can't yeah. make them up oh. uh, but children make up stories yeah. when when you see the signs of isolation and um you know the sadness that comes in in fact maya angelo yeah. Uh, the order, the fantastic order, Michelangelo, she lost her voice. This is also something that happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, Lori, we do have to take another quick break. We have more to yeah. talk about, including s something you shared with me about yeah. visual signs that might help you recognize if someone's yes. being exploited as well. So we'll talk about that right yes. after this break. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of In Focus, everyone. This morning, we've been talking to author Lori Sammons. Uh, Lori, I think we can go ahead and share some important information. You shared some mm. visuals with us, and I have this um, available full screen that the viewers can see. Yes. But let's talk about yeah. these visuals for the viewers to see as well. Like, what are some of the signs on someone's body that they might be exploited? Well, as we've started talking yeah. today, we've been talking about um, sexual exploitation, mm -hmm. yes. which is a gateway into human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we have a lot of young, vulnerable, and accessible individuals who are promised all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my husband and I, when we were coming back from Florida where we winter, actually mm -hmm. in May, mm -hmm. uh, we were in Beckley, mm -hmm. and we see this young lady that had um, a mark across her belly mm -hmm. and on her arms and also on her neck. and. Um, I, I'm now so trained in terms of what to look for that mm -hmm. I, I was starting to ask some questions because I was concerned and uh, was trying to ask if she was safe. Mm -hmm. And what I, when I was asking some of the identifying questions, 
the gentleman that was with her, probably 30 or 40 years older, began to come close to her and actually mm -hmm. accompanied her out of mm -hmm. the store. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, what I, I want the viewers to know is the crown mm -hmm. is a sign of rulership. Like a crown tattoo is. Mm -hmm, a really? crown tattoo. Mm. And so I don't know if you're, yes, you can see the, mm -hmm. the pieces there. Um, it is uh, the sign of the monarchy, and what you'll see oftentimes is the name of the trafficker, mm. that his initials mm -hmm. or um, some type of a pseudonym that mm. is there. And typically what happens, Melinda, is that once there's trust built and gifting is going on, now the perpetrator gets a little bit more possessive so they can maintain control and as a sign of loyalty these type of human traffic branding um, uh, images wow. are put on the bodies of individuals i, I went into an airport I, and i i've my husband and i travel often mm -hmm. and we've seen this so so many times we were in a health food store in the airport and a woman who waited on us mm -hmm. had um, property of Duke across her belly. She mm -hmm. was pregnant. Mm -hmm. She had a number of uh, brandings mm -hmm. um, uh, on her body as well. And I, and I asked her mm -hmm. if she was safe, and she flushed. Wow. And what um, I, I actually went to the person that was overseeing her, mm -hmm. and um, I just said, I have concern for this young lady mm -hmm. that is uh, front and center, mm -hmm. uh, that is taking mm -hmm. orders from people. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line was they had been watching her for quite some while. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a prostitute ring, and she was dispatching people. <gasps> and uh, mm -hmm. there, there is a real, um, there's a real manipulation, and it's mm -hmm. very calculated um, when a perpetrator gains trust with someone. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just, I'm just really concerned about our next generation. What do you think is most concerning? And then I do want to share the website um, after we talk about this sure. question. But uh, what do you, what are you most concerned about about this, the younger generation right now, Lori? We all know how any of us can get obsessed with social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my own granddaughter um, mm -hmm. said to me, Grandma, there's a Kevin that is saying I'm really pretty, and mm. he wants to meet uh, at the mall. Mm -mm. And uh, know, warning going, signs. going the, into the a panic. Red flags going off. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we're, we are all um, complimented when people say something yeah. to us that makes us feel good. Mm. But if I'm online and I'm inventing lovers right. or trying to make a connection of, mm -hmm. of some kind, mm -hmm. that is a major concern mm -hmm. that I have because mm -hmm. perpetrators, Melinda, go where children go yes and they're mm -hmm. constantly online mm -hmm. another thing that needs to be um, to make people aware is they also know kids especially in the fall and spring when it's warm mm -hmm. who is walking to school by themselves mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the parking lot of Century Elementary School uh, in mm -hmm. North Dakota where I taught for many years mm -hmm. and we could see uh, activity of, of individuals mm -hmm. who um, were watching our children. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm majorly concerned in parks. They go to ball games. They, they go where kids are at. Mm -hmm. And so if we're not careful at creating a conversation mm -hmm. about social media safety, mm -hmm about um, friendships and sure. needing to have that cookie person. If something happens, who can you talk to? Mm -hmm. um, our children are uh, very, very vulnerable, and I'm concerned about that. Right, and as you mentioned, these perpetrators, they know where children hang out online. Kids A are online, they're playing absolutely. video games, so they know where to target the children, and, and that is certainly concerning. Yeah. Let's talk about the website. I, I started mm -hmm. watching the video earlier, mm -hmm. and it, it was very compelling to hear from the teacher and then the former law enforcement officer yes. who's now retired. Um, let's go ahead and share that website. And I, I, we do have that where we can pull it up on the screen for everyone, but Good. what is that website, Lori? There are so many great uh, organizations that are mm -hmm. out there. One that I've had some affiliation with is Christie's Cause. Yes. 
um, generated by a person who has uh, been a survivor herself mm -hmm. and has done a beautiful job of connecting to vetted organizations like the mm -hmm. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Mm -hmm. And so on the Christie's Cause website, mm -hmm. what people will find is that there's a resource link mm -hmm. and there are hundreds of um, you know, how to talk to children so they're not fearful. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about media safety. Let's talk about um, how do educators document or how to, how do parents, um, you know, talk to the appropriate mm -hmm. authorities. Um, yeah, there's, there's many different topics that are on there and there are live videos and um, PSAs on there too, the public service announcements. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had hours to talk to you, Lori. We'll definitely do some follow-up interviews. We're almost out of time. We have about 30 seconds left. Sure. But where can folks purchase your book, One Story, Many Voices? It can be found on Amazon and uh, in bookstores uh, in Lewisburg as well. Uh, many, many different places, <laughs> but we are excited to give the opportunity for others to be first responders. Great. Lori, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing important information with our viewers. Thank you so much. And that does it for this edition of In Focus. And the show is about uh, people and events and important topics like what Lori had discussed, uh, recognizing signs if someone is sexually exploited. We dive into those topics here on In Focus as well. But if you have an idea for a segment, you can send me an email. You can reach out to me. My email is mzosh, M-Z-O-S-H, at wvva.com. That does it for us. We hope you have a great day. Great. great.